Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrug Gaming Telecom video. As usual, we're going to be going through the day's technology movements. That's right, of course, we're going to be looking at what's happened in the gaming and technology industry over the last day or so. There have been some subtle but interesting movements from both AMD and NVIDIA, which isn't really surprising to anyone since both of these companies seem on fire at the moment. We're going to be starting things out with AMD simply because they're first alphabetically, and then of course we'll move on to NVIDIA. AMD are launching the Excavator architecture. Now, let's just be clear here. These chips are essentially for... I guess you could say embedded applications. These are not going to be necessarily what you want to put into your high performance desktop, but it's still rather interesting. They're going to be based on the excavator architecture, and there are going to be a couple of different variants. There's the Brown Falcon and Prairie Falcon platforms. So, what does all of that mean? Well, Essentially, you're looking at some improvements over the previous architecture, which of course was Bulldozer. Now, there are a few subtle differences between them. Essentially, the processors are, of course, an amalgamation between a traditional CPU and a GPU. Once again, as you would expect, AMD are putting in GCN compute units. So, let's first of all talk about the iFamily Brown Falcon. Now, this will use a single excavator module, so that has two integer and one floating point, and that will be combined with four GCN units, uh, compute units, just to clarify, so that gives you a total of 256 stream processors. Meanwhile, the Prairie Falcon will be s even lower powered. It's going to be much the same as the previous, but cuts down the number of GCN CUs to just two, meaning just 128 stream processors. As one can imagine, this is primarily going to be for low power, low performance usages, and the iFamily is compatible with dual channel DDR3, or can go up to DDR4 memory configurations, but obviously memory bandwidth is probably not going to be a big deal, but maybe for power constraints. At the, I guess you could say the bottom of the pack, is an LX class of SOC. Now, these particular processors are going to be aiming at in, uh, industrial automation, military, that type of stuff. And it could potentially also see a work in uh, networking, communication relays, anything where you don't need necessarily huge amounts of performance, but power is obviously a concern. Now, you may be familiar with the processor inside of this. It's actually a dual-core Jaguar. There are some differences, of course, between it and the Jaguars that you would find inside, the, let's say, the PlayStation 4. Obviously, in those cases, you've got two four-core modules, whereas this just leaves um, two core Jaguars and just a single compute unit, so just 64 shaders. And thus, obviously, we see a cut down in the complexity of the design as well. Just one single channel DDR3, and the TDP is absolutely minuscule, depending obviously on things such as clock speeds and so on. It could be just a little as six watts. Kind of kind of crazy, right? Now I do also want to go through a small update from AMD, which is based on the Radeon 400 series, also known as Polaris, also known as the next big thing, also known as whatever else. So you may recall yesterday the mobile series of the 400, although there are some questions of how much of the mobile lineup has actually been revealed, um, is going to be launched in April. We know this because certain manufacturers of laptops have already released their PR statements. I wonder if that, I've, I, well, I gather it must be okay with AMD for them to have done that. However, interestingly, Robert Halleck over at AMD, we've had several interviews of him, of course. He's one of their chief uh, technical fellows. He's actually the global head of technical marketing over AMD. He's actually confirmed that Polaris is indeed going to be debuting mid this year. Now, obviously, that's not a precise date. It's not like it's June the 15th, 2016 or anything like that. However, it is at least fairly good confirmation that, well, really, it could only be, let's say, late May to very early August. So, really, you're looking at a time frame of around June, July time. Now, 
it's kind of interesting because this is a typical year-to-year -year cycle with most of their series, but the ambiguity comes in whether it's going to be a paper launch. For those unfamiliar with what a paper launch is, it's essentially the company saying, okay, the products are technically fine and available, but we kind of can't manufacture many of them. Essentially, it just means that, for example, one of the components that are dependent on the GPU or the product being launched just aren't available in sufficient quantities, or maybe they're having issues manufacturing the GPU in sufficient quantities. It's kind of a PR, I would go with a PR, how can I put it, a PR a PR event more than anything. It's essentially like saying we've got the GPU, we've got the fastest GPU out, but in reality finding one is equivalent of trying to find like a 25 leafed clover and this has actually happened with both AMD and a uh, well ATR as well back in the day and Nvidia and several other companies. One of the most infamous was actually the X800 series way back in the day from ATI when getting hold of them was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, it's true, I actually tried to buy one on launch and it was pretty darn hard. And that actually worked out rather well for me because I managed to get a slightly better ver variant. But anyway, that's slightly beside the point. So, let's go finally to Camp Green, also known as Pascal, also known as NVIDIA, also known as the rival, of course, to AMD. So, there are some conflicting reports from the Pascal uh, faithful, but supposedly uh, these reports come to us from Swee Clockers, who are of course a Swedish um, hardware website. They are actually reporting that NVIDIA are planning to unveil its architecture at Computex this year. Now Computex, for those who are unfamiliar with the event, is going to run between the 31st of May all the way to June the 4th. So. You know, technically, I guess we've just got a few days time frame. Now, once again, like AMD, NVIDIA have a lot of ground to cover. And they are, of course, moving to a TSMC 16NM FinVet process. So, I guess one could say, are they going for a paper launch? Well, it's too difficult to know. Now, as we already know, AMD are going to be launching in April with their Radeon Mobile series. So, technically, it's kind of like AMD have a gun to NVIDIA's head because you can't just not have a counter. It's like, let's say that I'm just throwing out there AMD launch on March, well, let's just use June 15th again, right? You can argue to you know, users who are like die-hard enthusiasts of NVIDIA, yeah, I'm happy to wait till late July or August, because they would potentially wait. However, most people fortunately don't have that kind of hardware affinity in, which I feel is the best option. They just simply go for the best piece of hardware given the price point that they can spend there. So let's say, for example, yeah, the GTX 970 or something along those lines may be a great GPU for the price of an R9 390, but if you've only got 150 to spend, it's irrelevant of how well it performs. So I think most folks are in that camp. But when a new product lineup comes out, let's say for this case the 400 series, and it was going against the 900 series of NVIDIA, it doesn't take a genius to figure that most people are going to plump to AMD and obviously NVIDIA. While they do have a large market share, they've got the largest percentage of the market share, they don't want to just be left out on the cold. Therefore, it would make sense for NVIDIA to at least show off what they've got to tell users, mm, you might want to wait. Because even if there's like a percentage of, you know, let's say even AMD, and I'm just throwing it out there, Let's say AMD are 5% faster. I'm not saying they are with their new architecture. I have no idea. NVIDIA could be a thousand times faster. AMD could be a thousand times faster. We just don't know. But let's assume that AMD were 5-10% faster, just for sake of argument. And they released at roughly the same, same time frames. If you've already invested in a lot of NVIDIA's architecture, or sorry, infrastructure, let's say you've got the Shield, let's say you've got G-Sync monitors, something like that, you may say to yourself, bugger it. 
absolutely bollocks to it. I'm just going to keep with Nvidia because I just don't want to spend that extra cash or go through the hassle of selling my old hardware to go to the new stuff. The reverse is also true, of course, for AMD. If it happens that Nvidia are slightly faster but AMD's hardware you've already bought into, you may decide just to keep to AMD simply because, or maybe you're just more familiar with the drivers or more familiar with the company or what have you. But anyway, this would probably mean that Nvidia are unlikely, at least these are the rumours, to talk about the big Pascal, also known as codename GP100. If you're unfamiliar with what that would be, it would be the equivalent of, let's say, the Titans or the GTX 980 Ti, that type of thing. Instead, it's probably it's going to be the high to mid-range GPUs, more like the GM204 successor. We don't exactly know which one, but let's say the GP104, GP106. However, once again, these are just rumours and I'm pulling them you know, out of the air somewhat, it's potentially that this is not going to happen. And for all we know, we won't see Pascal for, let's say, another four or five months on top of that. There were some rumours that Pascal had been delayed, but unfortunately, NVIDIA are not going to go on stage and say, or rather, you know, go on record at this point and say, yeah, it turns out that our architecture is running behind schedule, and they're also conversely not going to say, yeah, it turns out our architecture is running absolutely perfect, and we're definitely going to be doing a full launch, yeah, or let's say the June the 1st. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.